Greetings, everyone, from the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle here in Jonesboro, Georgia. We're glad to have you for our live streaming, uh, for our Wednesday night prayer meeting and Bible study. And we're going to have a Jubilee service tonight. We got the Rochester family from Blacksburg, South Carolina. They're going to sing a while, and then we'll bring a message from the Word of God. So right now, why don't you turn your place of listening into a sanctuary and invite the Holy Spirit to usher you into the presence of the Holy One. We want to personally greet our Harvest family. Church, we miss you here. We love you. I wish we could see you sitting in these pews tonight. But the Lord knows where you are. So right now, pray that God will just help us all to worship Him tonight. And He's worthy of our praise. Turn your listening place into your own church tonight and let's worship the Lord together. Let's sing the great song, Victory and Jesus, first and last verse. And if you can stand where you are, now if you're driving, don't do this, but if you can stand where you are, just stand there in your home, lift your hands to the Lord, because victory is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Jerry, lead us if you will. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his glory Of his precious blood of my sin and won the victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all the love built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angel singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. Cleansing Praise the Lord. I'm glad there is victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Tom, come over tonight and let's just go to the throne of grace in prayer. We want to pray for our nation. Uh, we all know we're in a crisis and uh, we're looking to the Lord to help us get through this. Regardless of what some politicians and other places may say, faith does work, prayer does work. Our faith is not in government. Our faith is in God. And we're going to give God the glory for who he is. And we appreciate our God and his faithfulness. And we're looking to God to help us through this crisis. Let's pray for all of those who do have uh, the COVID-19 virus. That God would heal them and help them. And those where death has come and touched their family. We want to pray for the comforting power of the Holy Spirit to be their portion. And let's just claim together that God is bigger than any mountain that we can or cannot see. I want to thank our church family for your support, your prayers through all of this crisis. And remember, your church is here for you. And we love you. The staff loves you. We're praying for you. And together we're going to trust God that the best is yet 
to come. Brother Tom, come take us to the throne of grace and then we'll have the Rochester family come tonight and we're looking forward for them ministering to us in song. Pray for us, Brother Tom. Let's all pray together. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, that we can come before the throne of grace and we call upon the one who is the divine Jehovah God, the one who is able to heal and cleanse, the only one that is able to heal and cleanse. God, we acknowledge tonight that we need you, Lord, way more than you need us. God, I thank you tonight for the opportunity to come to the house of God, Lord, to hear from heaven, from the word of God, to hear from God's people, to encourage our heart. Lord, I pray you'd bless our friends, the Rochester family tonight. Sing them in the sweet Holy Ghost of God. Make them a great blessing as this goes out around the country tonight. God, may it encourage God's people. And then I pray, Lord, you touch my pastor, Lord, as he stands. God, breathe on him, Lord, and God, may he preach in great power and glory and encourage God's people. And Lord, one more time, we pray for America. God, for our leadership, for our president, Mr. Donald Trump, God, that you direct him, give him wisdom beyond his years. God, I pray, Lord, that every decision made would be heavenly, God, and from the divine wisdom of the holy throne of God. Lord, direct our leaders, Lord, I pray our nation, God, would be turned to the cross, would be turned to Calvary, Lord. Men, women, boys, and girls through this time would come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Lord, for all you do for us, we're gonna eternally say thank you, Lord. You're worthy. Bless now this time and this night. We give you ourselves, Lord, and fill us and use us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. We're trusting the Lord to give us uh, a great service. Let me say this personal message to our Harvest family, those that's been giving online. You've been, some have been mailing their tithes in. Some have been coming by the office and putting it under the door. Whatever you've been doing, your pastor appreciates that so very much that the church will be able to function and we can support uh, our mission uh, missionaries faithfully and help our staff and I praise God for your faithfulness in times like these I, I have a burden on my heart for our friends who travel and sing and our friends who travel and preach that's how they pay their bills that's how they feed their families and uh, the Lord's laid it on my heart to try to be uh, some measure of a blessing to people that's been a blessing to us and we love the Rochesters I've been knowing them and preaching in meetings with their family since Benjamin and Becky were just uh, little bitty kids and uh, they grew up to be fine young people and they've raised a bunch of good young'uns for God and uh, then one day Scott came into Becky's life and and uh, ruined her life and, and uh, but Becky's the best thing ever happened to you, son. Yes, sir. You're from Henderson, North Carolina. And, uh, but I appreciate this family. We've traveled together and sang together and preached together literally all over this country. And they're dear friends of mine. And so they're grounded right now like our evangelist friends and like our traveling ministry. And we're just waiting on all of the things to change. And all we can do is trust in the Lord. But... If the Lord has blessed you and you're able to give something special, I want you to write this address down. The Rochesters, 738 Cherokee Falls Road, Blacksburg, South Carolina, 29702. Or you can go to their website, www.therochesterfamily.com and uh, send them an offering to help them in these times to the meetings pick back up and uh, let's share our blessings with our brothers and sisters in Christ. They're going to come sing about 30, 35 minutes for us and I hope our people enjoy this special tonight and Brother Scott, I'm sure when the other churches uh, quit their live streaming, this will be up on our website. Other people will be joining us. We have thousands of people a week that enjoy these broadcasts and so normally we would give them a big hand clap. They can't hear it, but Harvest Baptist Tabernacle loves the Rochester family. We're going to let them come and sing, and here's my hand, okay? <laughs> So many 
many religions everywhere. They say, send me your money and you'll have wealth beyond compare. Others say a prayer call, that's all that you need. Well, you can have all that, I'll just take Jesus, he's sufficient for me. And I'll stick with the old stuff Cause it works every time From Genesis to Revelation There's power divine I was filled with the Spirit When He saved my soul And I'll stick with Step all the way till I get home. And what makes the difference? Between the Buddhist and me It's there God was born Of sinful man Mine was Holy Ghost can see No brother let me tell you What settles it all When you go to the grave There are Buddha still lays Cross Forevermore, and I'll stick with the old stuff, cause it works every time. From Genesis to Revelation, there's power divine. I was filled with the Spirit when He saved my soul. Filled with the Spirit When He saved my soul And I'll stick with the old stuff All the way till I get home Brother Joe, what a blessing it is to be with you tell you we thank the Lord for this opportunity I know the days seemingly have been dark I know a lot of trouble a lot of turmoil on every hand but this song here uh, is requested that we do the song title says there's a brighter day coming I'm glad one of these days there won't be no more coronavirus there won't be no more COVID-19 there won't be no more lockdowns it'll be a day with our Lord and Savior the Lord Jesus Christ a brighter day
was empty almost his eyes filled with tears his mind filled with memories of not so long ago when the church house was full not one pew was empty the altar was stained with saints tears as he stands there this morning in a near empty church house his opening remarks are these words There's a heaven to gain And a hell to shun The way is still straight There's a race to be run You can live as you please but you must pay the cost And the highway to heaven Still goes by the cross Some of his members Thought he was old-fashioned Unwilling to change with the times So they found other churches more modern day preachers who were willing to let things go by. But the old preacher stood for what he believed in and what he had preached 40 years. As he stands there this morning in a near empty church house, his opening remarks are these words. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. The way is still straight. There's a race to be run. You can live as you please, but you must pay the cost. The highway to heaven still goes by the cross. Now the old preacher man 
stands there in that city, the city he's preached of so long. Oh, but he's never seen such a great congregation all gathered to welcome him home. And he's never heard more beautiful singing that is coming from that heavenly band. He's preached his last sermon, he's carried his last burden, he's at rest in that heavenly land. Still want us to know that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. The way is still straight, there's a race to be run. You can live as you please, but you must pay the cost. Highway to heaven still goes by the cross. You can live as you please, but you must pay the cost. And the highway to heaven still goes by the cross. Every time we sing that song, I'm flooded with memories, Brother Tom, or my grandpa, or Brother Joe, your dad. It ain't been just a few years we stood here and, and celebrated his home going, and uh, they're not sad tonight. I can promise you that. They're not suffering. They're not any kind of sickness. They're just praising the Lamb of God forever and forever and forever. One of these days, come morning, we're going to join them in that city, in this we're going to do a song about heaven. This is a song that Becky wrote, and it just talks about all the splendors of heaven, but it talks about the God of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that's seated on the throne. Heaven, can you imagine? Imagine 
forward to that day. Brother Joe, grab the mandolin. Come on up here and let's pick one together. Uh, Ben's going to grab his banjo. And we will do Hallelujah, I'm Ready to Go just before the kids come up and sing a couple songs for us. Looking forward to hearing Brother Joe preach, one of our favorite preachers. We love him. Love to be with him in all the meetings we get to be with him in. And I tell you, it's such a blessing to us. Brother Joe, thank you for letting us come. We're going to do Hallelujah, I'm Ready. Me and Ben got to stay six foot apart now. We got social dis. Is that right? Hey, Ben, this thing ain't going to work, so you got another? Oh, yeah. Give us a word of testimony, Scott, while we get ready. We didn't come prepared to sing. Well, I want to thank the Lord for saving me, I tell you. Good to have all of you watching by live stream, and uh, we sure do again appreciate Brother Joe letting us come and and be a part of the service. Brother Joe, thank you for helping us out. He makes this statement that we go all over the country together and there ain't a thing we wouldn't do for each other. There ain't a thing he wouldn't do for us, a thing we wouldn't do for him. So he says we go all over the country doing nothing for each other. And uh, Brother Joe, we love you. Y'all about ready? Hallelujah, I'm ready.
the girls coming. They're going to do a couple songs. And uh, we're going to let Mally do a song that she's been doing for a little while now. And it's how we're all making it through this crisis, through this pandemic. We know as, as God's youngins, our Lord is taking good care of us. And that's what she's going to sing. My Lord's taking good care of me. Sing her, baby. service Jonesboro I mean Harvest Baptist Tabernacle we miss you miss you filling up these pews and I tell you Lord willing one of these days we'll get to see you and hug on your neck shake your hand don't have to worry about social distance and get to hear that good choir sing and we're looking forward to that day but the girls are going to do a song they've been doing for a little while now we were out in Colorado I guess probably 10 years ago maybe a little longer than that and uh, the pastor would, we were sitting across from the pastor while he was eating while we were eating supper and he got to tell him how that he was on the internet just a few weeks before we got out there looking for some music to go along with the message he is wanting to preach. And he came across the New Man of Baptist Church Youth Choir over in Marion, North Carolina. Brother Tony Shirley and the youth choir was singing this song entitled, He Knows My Name. The pastor said, I sit there and watch that youth choir sing, sing and cried like a baby all the way through it, thinking about the great God of heaven that stepped out on nothing spoke everything into existence and he said this same God takes time to know me and know me by my name he said it wasn't too long after he said I went out to West Coast I'm out there to preach a morning chapel service and he said I'm sitting on the platform with the vice president of the college and he said I look out at all the students and all the teachers in that auditorium that morning and I realized with the exception of only about two students are from my church he said nobody there had a clue who I was he said, to make matters worse, one, during one of the songs, the vice president leans over and says, excuse me, sir, what was your name? And he said, I leaned over and told him what my name was, started crying like a baby all over again, thinking nobody here has a clue who I am, but there's a God in heaven who knows me, and he knows me by my name. We 
they, the, after supper, we went back in the auditorium that night. We practiced the song, and we were going to surprise the pastor with it on Wednesday night. And Wednesday afternoon, I'm standing in the parking lot of the church, and my cell phone rings, and it's one of the staff members from the New Man of Baptist Church, Brother Charlie Garden's his name. And I tell Brother Charlie the story that I just shared with you about this preacher, and Brother Charlie said, man, it seems like just in recent days that song has been a blessing to a lot of people. And he went on to tell me how that just a few weeks before this, he said we had a missionary to Mexico in one of our evening services. He said the missionary sat on the front row and our youth choir just happened to be singing that song that particular night. He said right in the middle of the song, the missionary jumps up off the front row and he's a shouting, praising the Lord and having himself a time. And he said all of a sudden, he starts a conversation with our youth choir. He said, young people, that may be just a bunch of words to you, the fact that this God knows us by name. He said, but it's real to me. And he went on to testify how that even some weeks before this, he said, I was down in Mexico, said, we're driving back into the city where we're missionaries to. My wife, my children, and myself are in the car. And he said, as we approach the gate of the city, I'm the third car in line to go through the gate. And he said, right at the gate, there's a roadblock. We think it's just the authorities checking cars coming in. He said, but it happened to be men in mass, automatic weapons and assault rifles. He said it was the drug cartel. He said, we watch as those men in mass go to the first car, two cars ahead of me, and they jerk the man out of the car and said they beat him to death right there on the side of the road. He said, they go to the second car, they jerk that man out, they beat him to death. And he said, going through my mind is I'm next. He said, I watched as a man in a mask comes to my car door said the man reached for the handle, let it go, and walked on by. He said, we just happened to be listening to, he knows my name. He said, they went to the car after us, they jerked that man out there beating him. The car after that, they jerked the man out there beating him, and he said, all of a sudden, we hear sirens coming up behind us, it's the police. He said, a gunfight ensues, those drug cartels start shooting their automatic weapons at the police, the police start shooting back, he said, we're right in the middle of bullets flying all over the place. He said, not wanting to sit in our car and be hit by a bullet coming through the car, the glass. He said, we decided to try to open up the passenger door, crawl out on the ground, get over in the ditch just to get out of the gunfight. He said, I guess during all the melee of trying to get out of the, out of the car, somebody must have hit repeat on the CD player. He said, for seven hours, we laid in the ditch with our head on the ground not knowing how this thing was going to turn out he said but we listened to he knows my name he said young people I'm standing before you tonight because I can say that I know the great God of heaven and that's a good thing he said but greater than me saying I know him it's the God of heaven saying he knows me you're sitting at home tonight listening by way of radio by way of social media by way of Facebook whatever it is I don't have a clue what's going on in your heart and mind right now through all this pandemic all this seemingly dark days we're in but I do know there's a God in heaven who says my sheep hear my voice they know me and they follow me and this same God says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest then he gives us the promise you just cast all your care on me cause I care for you you may be walking in the valley tonight. He said, rest assured, I am the lily of the valley. He said, you may be in a storm tonight, but I already stepped out on the waves of the storm. I already spoke peace, and the waves laid down. The wind stopped blowing, and the light lightning stopped flashing. You may be facing sickness tonight, but he said, I am the great physician. You may even be facing death, but he told Mary and Martha, I've got that covered too. I am the resurrection and the life. No matter what it is you're facing, God says, I've got an answer. You may be watching you tonight and you're lost you don't know our savior rest assured he says i've come to seek and to save that which was lost no matter what the problem is no matter whether it's a pandemic no matter what it is in your life god has the answer and he knows us his children by name he listens they sing he knows my name
sure did, and it blessed my heart to be reminded that we've not been forgotten by our Heavenly Father. We'll be preaching along that line tonight out of John's Gospel, chapter number 10, and if you're listening in your home or watching in your home or place of business, pull your Bible out if you got it, and we'll read some scripture together. I want you to remember this address, if you will, the Rochester's. 738 Cherokee Falls Road, Blacksburg, South Carolina, 29702. Or you can visit their website at www.therochesterfamily.com. And let's try to be a blessing to these folks in this time of, they call it shelter in place, I call it lockout and, and lockdown. But let's try to be a blessing to these traveling singers and these full-time evangelists that God will help them. And uh, the Lord knows their needs and they've been a blessing to so many people. I've told our people this for 35 years and I tell other people this across the country, the traveling singers and preachers that God has given us, their gifts, I believe, their gifts to our local assembly. And they're a great blessing to us. And so let's in turn remember them. John's Gospel tonight, chapter number 10. And the Bible said in verse number two, but he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. I love what he says down in verse number five, and a stranger will they not follow, for they will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. I love what he says down in verse number 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Then he comes to verse number 28 and says, and I give unto them, the them are the sheep. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father. Father are one. I love this passage because it exemplifies that divine relationship that God has with his people. I'm glad tonight that I know him and I'm glad that he knows me. I'm glad tonight that I have him and I'm glad that he has me. I'm glad tonight that I love him and he loves me. I love these passages in the word of God that magnify that divine relationship between God and his people, and Christ and his church. I love the father and son language of the Bible that God is our father and we are his children. I love the potter and clay language of the Bible that he is the heavenly potter and we're clay in the potter's hand. I love the captain and soldier language of the scripture that we are soldiers in his army and he is the captain of our salvation. I love the bride, the, the, the vine and branch language of the scripture that he is the vine and we are the branches and without him we can do nothing. I love the bride and groom language of the scripture, that he is the heavenly groom that has picked and purchased and one day he will come and claim his bride. 
I'm glad we are the body, the building, the bride, and he is the head, and he is the cornerstone, and he is the heavenly bridegroom. But when we come to John 10 tonight, he gives us another example of that relationship. And it's one of the most precious in the Bible. It's the sheep and the shepherd. That sheep and shepherd relationship shows forth that divine relationship between Christ and his church. I love what the Bible said in Psalm 100. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I love the way the psalmist put it in Psalm 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I love the allegory that Jesus gave in Luke chapter number 15 about the shepherd that had one sheep that was missing. And the Bible said that shepherd went after that one lost sheep. Praise God. And he searched until he found it. And boy, I'm glad one day the good shepherd got on your trail. He got on mine. And he found us out on the bleaky mountains of sin and brought us to himself. And I'm glad we can say the Lord is our shepherd. The reason why I love John 10 so much is because it tells us who and what the shepherd is. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the shepherd. And in Luke, and in, Luke and in John chapter number 10, he is given a special title. He is called the good shepherd. And he tells us in the text tonight why he is called the good shepherd. And it's because the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And you say, well, what's so significant about that? Well, notice from Genesis 4 where Abel offered up that first offering. And all the way down through the Psalms and the prophets and the historical books of the Bible, all the way do you come to where John said in John 1, 29, behold the Lamb of God. All from Genesis to John, you have the little lambs, you have the little sheep dying for their shepherds, dying for the sins of Israel, dying in the temple and tabernacle ministry. But when you come to John's gospel where Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, no longer do you have the sheep and the lambs dying for the shepherd, but you have the shepherd dying for the sheep. He is the good shepherd. There are several reasons in John 10 that he is the good shepherd. Number one, he's the certified shepherd. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, he is not a stranger. He is not a thief. He is not a robber. He is not a hireling. He is the good shepherd. And he used this personal, powerful, I am the good shepherd. Notice the definite article, the, I am the good shepherd. That means there is no other outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know all through the Bible were introduced to shepherds? Moses was a shepherd. David was a shepherd. We're introduced to different shepherds through all the Bible. But when you come to the New Testament after Christ, shepherds are not mentioned anymore. The last reference you have to shepherds outside of Jesus is the shepherds that were there in the fields that night when the virgin birth took place. But all of a sudden when Jesus comes on the scene, the Bible doesn't talk about shepherds anymore because you don't need one because Jesus is the good shepherd. He is not a stranger. He is not a stranger to us, and I'm glad we're not a stranger to him. He is not a thief and a robber. 
Boy, the Bible tells us in this text, the thief and the robber, what they've come to do. They've come to kill and to steal and destroy. But Jesus is not a thief and a robber. He didn't come to kill. He didn't come to steal. He didn't come to destroy. He came to live. He came to give. You know why he didn't come to steal? He don't have to steal because it all belongs to him anyway. He didn't come to take your life. He came to give you life. He is not the taker. He's the giver. He's not the destroyer. He's the life giver. He is not a thief and a robber. He is not a hireling. And someone said, what is a hireling? A hireling was a man that looked like a shepherd. He talked like a shepherd. He was dressed like a shepherd. He had a shepherd's hood. He had a shepherd's script. He had a shepherd's bag. He had a shepherd's rod. He had a shepherd's staff. But he didn't have a shepherd's heart. And what a hireling would do, he would go to the shepherd and he would say, if you need to be gone for a while, if you pay me some money, I'll watch your flock. And so the shepherd would take him at his word and give him some money to watch his flock. But the problem was when the danger came, when the thief would come, when the robber would come, or when the wild beast would come, he had his own interest in mind and he would run and forsake the flock of sheep and leave them a vulnerable target for the enemy. Jesus said, I'm not a hireling. He doesn't run when the beast comes. He doesn't run when the danger comes. Let me say this about the Lord. He's never forgotten, failed, or forsaken one of his sheep. He's certified. He is the good shepherd. And then let me say in this text, he's not only the certified shepherd, he is the caring shepherd. Because he said, they're in my Father's hand. And he made an emphatic statement in verse 28, no man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Safe in the family, safe in the fold, safe in the faith, the Lord is the caring shepherd. And as they sang a while ago, my Lord will take care of me. And I want to say to you little mothers tonight, word about your children through this a uh, crisis that we're living in, he'll take care of you. Let me say to every pastor that after your service tonight, you'll watch this uh, downloaded program and you're wondering about your church. God will take care of you. You dads are worried about your wife and your children and your job and your finances. Hear me tonight. It may get rough. It may get dark, but standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find a shepherd that's certified and he's the caring shepherd. But I'm interested tonight in verse number three. He's not only the certified shepherd, he's not only the caring shepherd, but he's the calling shepherd. It says that he calleth his own by name and leadeth them out. I love what John 10 says about those sheep. They said, uh, they know his voice. He said, they're not going to follow, but they will flee from a stranger because they don't know his voice. But Jesus said, my sheep, they know my voice. And there's a lot of things Brother Joe doesn't know tonight, but there's one thing that I do know. I know when God speaks to me. He is the calling shepherd. He calleth his own by name. Several years ago, I got a very vivid picture of this text. I was preaching in uh, the area that I lived in before I came to Atlanta, southwest Virginia. And there's a little town called Meadowview. Meadowview is next to Chilhowee. Chilhowee is next to Seven Mile Ford. And somewhere between Bristol and Marion, Virginia, you'll find those wonderful places where some wonderful people live. And several years ago, I was preaching for my friend John Serber. In fact, he may be watching tonight and or 
later on when he gets home from his church. And I was preaching for Brother John and he said on Thursday night, he said, now come Friday night, Brother Joe, we're going to eat it at my mama's house. And I knew what that meant when he said, you're going to eat at my mama's house. I knew what that meant. That meant real fried chicken. I'm like my friend Larry Brown. It ought to be a crime to do anything to a chicken but fry it in grease. We're going to eat at Mama's house. I knew that meant cream corn. I knew it meant real mashed potatoes, the kind that had lumps in them. And if you eat enough of them, it'll put a lump on you. I knew it meant real banana pudding with Neller wafers in it. I knew what it meant. And so that night we ate and ate and ate and ate. So we had to go outside before church to walk around just to get another breath. And out behind his mom's house, there was a big flock of sheep. They were out there grazing and Brother John looks at me and says, Brother Joe, why don't you call these sheep down here to this fence? Well, I didn't know how to call sheep. I'd never called sheep before. I know if you want a dog, you'd say doggy doggy. If you want a cat, you'd say kitty kitty. So I jumped upon the fence and said sheepy sheepy. I didn't know what to say. Man, I made every kind of noise I could make. And those sheep, Brother Scott, never one time looked my way. Brother John looked at me and said, Brother Joe, watch this. He cupped his hand around his mouth and he made some kind of noise and then all of a sudden, every sheep in that pasture came at a dead run down to that fence. He saw the puzzled look in my eyes and he said, Brother Joe, you know why you couldn't do that? He said, you're a stranger to them. They don't know you. I was able to do that because I'm their shepherd. They know my voice. They've known my voice their whole life. I am not a stranger to them. And let me just say tonight to the body of Christ, all these voices that's pulling for our attention and our allegiance, let's don't listen to the howling of the enemy and the insults of the ungodly, but let's keep our heart turned toward the good shepherd because he calleth his own by name. Oh, I like what the songwriter said. Jesus spoke to me one day. Praise his holy name. I'm glad he is the calling shepherd and he calleth his own by name. You remember that little short fella? The Bible said he was short of statue, but he heard that Jesus was passing by. And because he was short, he couldn't see over the crowd. And so the Bible said he goes to this tree and he climbs up this tree and that tree lifts him up over his inability and helps him to see Jesus that's passing by. And while he's up that tree looking for Jesus, praise God at the foot of the tree, Jesus is looking for him. And Jesus came to the very tree this little man had climbed. And when Jesus came to the foot of that tree, he looked up. Now remember the Bible said that he calleth his own by name. And that is exactly what Jesus did at the foot of that tree. He looked up and called him by name and said, Zacchaeus, come down, for today I must abide at your house. And as the Savior looked up, Zacchaeus came down and they went on because there was a shepherd in the midst of his lostness that knew him and called him by name. 
Boy, I'm glad that night in Reedsville, North Carolina, 1979, out of all the millions of people on planet Earth, the good shepherd called my name and he came to my tree and I met him that night and I'm his and, and he is mine. And you may be watching this internet broadcast, uh, lost and undone with that God or his son. There's a tree called Calvary and you can meet him at the foot of the cross uh, and he'll call you to himself and he'll call you by name and if the Lord is calling you tonight answer him and say Lord here am I I'm glad he calleth his own by name yes he died on that old rugged cross and they put him in that borrowed tomb for three days and three nights I was a lady that Jesus had met and loved and ministered to like no other. And she had heard that Jesus had died. And he was buried in that grave of Joseph of Amathea. Early that first Easter morning, she came with her spices. And by the way, that wasn't the first time she had fallen at the foot of Jesus with her spices. She came that day to worship the Lord and anoint him and just try to do what she could. And when she got to the tomb that morning, to her amazement, the stone was rolled away and the grave was empty. She starts looking around at that garden and all of a sudden there's a man clothed in white walks up to her and they begin a conversation. The Bible said she thinks or she thought it was the gardener. Well, come to find out it wasn't the gardener, but it was the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. And as she is talking to this man that she doesn't know yet, she thinks, she asked him, she said, where's my Lord? Where's my master? Where's my Savior? Somebody's taking him away and sir, if you know where he is, you just tell me. You will have to go, I'll go find him. I'll go get him myself. If you'll just tell me what I can find my Lord in the midst of all of this. And I see a smile come on that man's face. And he doesn't give her a 30 minute lecture on the doctrine of the resurrection. He doesn't tell her illustrations about life after death. He just looks through her tears and says one word, Mary. He calleth his own by name, Mary, brother. And when he said Mary, she jumped back and said, Rabboni, master, it is you. You know what dried her tears? You know what calmed her fear? You know what settled her doubt? Because that was the resurrected Christ at an empty tomb calling her by name. The Lord knew she was tore up. The Lord knew she was bewildered. The Lord knew she was confused. I'm about to preach in this empty church house now. And I'm telling you, the Lord knows our name tonight. He knows we're bewildered tonight. He knows we're afraid. He knows we're on the verge of panic. He knows we're confused. He knows we don't understand. And people are saying, where is God in all of this crisis? Where is God in all of my problems? Where is God in the midst of my affliction? I'm gonna tell you where he's at. He's where he always has been, standing by an empty grave beside of a sovereign throne knowing your need and knowing your name and listen real close he's calling it tonight because he calleth his own by name I'm glad he knew Zacchaeus by name I'm glad he knew Mary by name but in the closing moments of this broadcast tonight remember in John 11 Jesus had a friend by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus had the blessing to live with his two sisters. I don't see a mother and a father mentioned, so I've often said it was a 
bachelor living with two old maids. God bless any man that has to live with two old maids. Can I get a witness right there? And Lazarus and Martha and Mary, they were friends of Jesus and Jesus often would stop by their house. Someone said, I wonder why Jesus would often stop by their house because he was welcome there. And let's let me say this, you'll be surprised at the places Jesus will frequent if he's made welcome. I've often told our Harvest family he's welcome anytime to any service we got and I'll move over and he can take over. He would go by that home and he's in another village four days away and Lazarus gets sick and they send him a message. Your friend, the man you love, is sick. But Jesus abode four days where he was. At the end of those four days, he looks at his disciples and says, let's go. And as they are going, the messenger comes again and says, it's too late, forget it. He's dead. He said, oh no, he's just asleep. Let's go wake him. And when Jesus comes into the village of Bethany, Martha comes out and says, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And before you judge what Martha said, she's right. Did you know Jesus never preached a funeral? You've got the Olivet Discourse. You've got the discourse of the parables of Matthew 13. You have the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 6 and 7. Jesus preached some awesome sermons on salvation, the Holy Spirit, uh, prayer and faith, but he never preached a funeral. You know why Jesus never preached a funeral? Because he never, you, you can't have a funeral around Jesus. Why, he went to one, the widow of name, and touched the casket, and the boy got up. You can't die around resurrection. I believe Jesus had to die on the cross before those thieves could die. You can't die around resurrection. If you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And he said to Martha, he said, hey, your brother's going to live again. And then she starts quoting the Bible to the man that wrote it. I know he's going to live again to the last day of the great resurrection. And Jesus said, hey, I am the resurrection. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Where have you laid him? And she said, oh, Lord, don't go over there and roll that stone away. My brother's been dead for four days and corruption has set in and he's starting to stink already. And I want to say to Martha, don't you worry about that stink because there's enough fragrance in that rose of Sharon and in that lily of the valley to clean up any stink that's in your life. And I just want to say to those watching tonight, when life stinks, I'm glad he's the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. And they go to that tomb and Jesus says, roll away the stone. And when they rolled that stone away, Jesus stood at the mouth of that cave and he didn't say, hey, anybody in there? He didn't even say, come forth. He called him by name and said, Lazarus, come forth. I asked Mays Jackson one time, I said, Brother Mays, why did Jesus specifically say, Lazarus, come forth? He said, because that's the only one that he wanted. He said, Joe, if he'd have said come forth, every dead person in that cemetery would have walked out. He said, one day that's exactly what he's going to do because he shouted up the grave of Lazarus and one man came out, he shouted on Calvary and many of the Old Testament saints came out but when he comes in the clouds of glory for the great getting up morning with the shout and the voice of the archangel, not a one, not a few, not many but every child of God, they went to their grave and laid their head on the dying pillar in the finished work of Calvary, He's coming out of the grave, Lazarus come forth. And he that was dead came forth out of that ground because he calleth his own by name. I'll be honest with you tonight. I'm not a sign watcher. I'm not a sign watcher. 
Somebody said the signs, look at the signs. I'll be honest with you. I'm not smart enough to do all that sign watching. I got some friends of mine that know everything about them signs. They know who the Antichrist is. They know how many hairs is in the horse's tails in the book of the Revelation. I asked a friend of mine one time, he preached on the Antichrist. I said, man, you preached so plain on that. Uh, I I mean, you gave me the impression you've already met him. He said, no, I've not met him, but I've been married to his sister for 40 years. (laughs) I can hear you laughing all over radio land and TV land and internet land. I don't know all about the signs. I'm not a sign watcher. But I tell you what I am doing tonight. I'm listening for the shout. I don't know what all them signs mean, but I know what that shout means. Oh, when he shouts with the voice of the archangel, and I'm glad that same voice that called Zacchaeus to salvation and that same voice that called Mary to comfort, I'm glad the same voice that called Lazarus out of the grave into life, it spoke to me one day, and it still speaks to me tonight, and I'm listening for that day when the voice sounds like a trumpet, and when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there because he calleth his own by name. He whispers sweet peace to the people of God. I'm glad there is one tonight that knows us. He knows our nature, he knows our need, and he knows our name. And he's calling tonight. If you don't know him, he's calling for you. If you need a miracle in your life tonight, he's calling you. And one day we'll hear that final call. Come up hither. And this robe of flesh will drop and rise and seize the everlasting prize because we're listening for that divine call of our shepherd. I'm glad tonight he calleth his own by name. Some of you grew up like I did in a rural area where you didn't have to worry about being kidnapped and robbed and abused. I mean, we ate our breakfast and we went outside and came in and ate our, at that day we called it dinner, went back out, came back in at five and ate our supper. And I can hear my mother about 4.30 or 5 o'clock call my name. I'm going to tell you what my mama called me. Nobody else can call me that. Jojo. That's not cool. Jojo. Supper's ready. Come, Jojo. Go wash. Supper's ready. And boy, I'd hurry to the house and we'd have supper. But oh, if my mother ever came to that door and called me by my full name, it was more than supper. If she came to that door and said, Joseph Clance, Arthur, boy, I knew. Man, I wasn't getting ready for the biscuits. We wasn't getting ready for the fried chicken. We was getting ready for something else. Because if she ever said, Joseph Clance, Arthur, I'm telling you, when they call you by your full name, you better look out. Somebody done done something wrong. I remember how sweet it was. My mama's little voice in the evening shouted, Show Joe, supper's ready. You'd go wash up and you'd go to the table. Oh, how sweet and happy seems those days of which I dreamed. When remember I recall them now and then and with rapture sweet my weary heart would beat if I could hear my mother Pray again. And how heartwarming that was to hear the voice of my mother call me, come home. Woo! It's supper time. Praise God, you wait till that some golden daybreak when Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, steps out on the clouds of glory and calls the church home out of a world of sin and sorrow. Come on home, it's supper time. And for a billion, zillion, infinity years, We'll sit 
the throne of God and worship our Savior who is the Good Shepherd. If you don't know him tonight, he's calling you. If you have a need in your life, it's calling you. If you're a child of God longing for the coming of Christ, he's listening. And we're praying, even so, come Lord Jesus. And I'm glad he is the calling shepherd. We've been praying in these days of crisis that God would use this to bring revival to America, bring revival to our families, and bring revival to our churches. Let me say this tonight, if this doesn't bring us to our knees where we need revival, I don't know what will, but out of this trial, out of this crisis, it's our prayer that God would send revival. And I want to leave the air tonight with this song that's a prayer that God's people has been praying a long time. Hallelujah, I'm the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Where you're listening, you sing with us and you pray with us that we'll see revival one more time while we're listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd. Let's sing that first and last verse, Brother Jerry. We praise thee, O God. Revive us again. Praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Let's do that second verse. Revive us again Fill each heart with thy love May each soul be rekindled With fire from above Hallelujah, thine the glory Hallelujah, amen Hallelujah, thine the glory Revive us again Let's do that last verse all glory all glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who had drunk all our sorrows and cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Don't forget now, Monday through Friday, we're broadcasting on our Facebook for a moment of faith. And then the Lord willing, Navigator Church at 1030 Sunday. And then 11 o'clock, we'll be live streaming again. God bless you, church. We love you. God be with you till we meet again.